Thank you. Amen. I want to welcome those who are watching by Facebook. God bless you tonight. Praise the Lord. Good to be in God's house. Better than in the jailhouse. Hallelujah. <laughs> Could be in the hospital bed somewhere. Sister Vicky saw a lot of people in hospital beds today. Thank you, Pastor. Do we have the HCSB version there? Do we have that version there? We do? Oh, cool. Okay, I didn't know we had that. Amen. Well, let's just open a word of prayer. Father, thank you that we're gathered here together, Lord, in your presence. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I pray for those who are not here tonight, God, that you will speak to their hearts, Lord, and show them the importance of Bible study and how it's, in, it's part of our daily life of having food to eat and to be aware of the things that are going on. You said that the word of God is given for a rebuke, for instruction in righteousness. And so, Father, tonight, Lord, we ask your Holy Spirit to lead and guide me as I share your word in this uh, important topic that we're going to be talking about tonight. Lord, I pray, God, that you open our hearts and minds and ears to hear what your Spirit has to say. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen, 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 Amen. Um, Open up your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to start reading from verse 1. I'm going to go to some slides later on, not right now, but uh, later on. But I just want to, um, to read this um, portion of Scripture this morning, I mean tonight. Um, now the Spirit... Spirit, and we've got to be clarifying what spirit, because there are many spirits that are out in the world. There are many voices without, and they're not without significance. The Bible says there is a spirit that is out there that is not the spirit of God. Amen. There's a spirit out there that's not the spirit of God. It's the spirit of Antichrist, it's the spirit of the enemy, it's the spirit of flesh, it's the spirit of man. There's so many spirits out there, false spirits, there's uh, uh, evil spirits, there's all kinds of spirits out there. But the Bible says now the spirit, the spirit, not a spirit, but the spirit, the definite article, the spirit, explicitly, and I, and I want to look at that, that word for a moment, if I can just get my... My Bible here open here because I didn't I didn't get it open in the beginning. Come on, turn around. There you go. You know, you all talk to stuff too. I know you do. Amen? Yeah, I know you do. You're just uh not admitting it. That's what it is. And I get all these I get all these uh things that open up and say, open now, open now. I said, no, I don't want to open now. Come on, close. Okay, there we go. Let me just get this going here. Because I want to look at that word tonight. I want to look at that word explicitly. First Timothy. Chapter 4. Oops. That word means distinctly outspokenly. In other words, there was nothing hidden. The Spirit is speaking, and He speaks explicitly. And He says that in the latter times. Now, that's the times we're living in. I believe that we are, we are sitting 
okay, in the minutes of the prophetic time clock to the Lord's return. Now, it's not our time clock. Now, I'm saying minutes is different than God's time clock. But we're, that's the urgency that I'm trying to give you is that we are sitting in the last days or the latter times. Now, the Spirit expressly says, and he's, warned, he's warning, Timothy is a pastor, and Paul is warning Timothy, and he's telling him, listen, this is going to happen. Now, they didn't know back then when the end times were coming. They believed in the imminent return of Jesus. They believed that he was going to return in their lifetime. They believed that. He said, I'm, where I'm going, I'm going to come and get you. So they believed that, that Jesus could come at any moment. Today, we live as if Jesus is not coming. We've already got next year planned. Okay? And sometimes people will say, uh, you know, you, you want to do something next year? And I say, God willing, yes. Because we don't know if we're going to be here next year. But the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, now, how many would agree we're in those times now? Amen? And if he's saying that back then, the latter times, if he's saying that back then, and we've gone 2,000 years almost, we're certainly closer to the latter times than they were. He said, but this one characteristic is going to happen. In the latter times, some, not all, and that's why God's been speaking on my heart about the remnant. And God has a remnant. There are 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal, if I can use that terminology. Okay, there are those who are still uh, faithful to the call of God, still faithful to the things of God. And so the Spirit is expressly saying that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Now, we're going to look at that word uh, uh, for a moment, depart. That means that at one time, they were steadfast. At one time, they were on solid ground. At one time, they were in the faith. But then something happened. Something happened. And I say this every time I get a chance. Compromise is the devil's playground. The moment that you compromise is the moment the devil will come in with his seducing spirits and teachings of devils and will bring deception to you and cause some of you to depart from the faith. Many people, you talk to them and you find out that one time they were so on fire for God. They were in the faith. And now some of them don't even believe anymore. I was talking with somebody the other day and, and uh, they sent me a video about... Uh, Carlton Pearson, I don't know if you remember Carlton Pearson. Carlton Pearson was on PTL. He went to OIU, uh, was very, very influential in raising up a church, sang beautifully, was, was a man of God. I mean, had a church of almost 8,000 people. And then one day he said God spoke to him and gave him the revelation that there is no hell. That everyone was going to go to heaven. And uh, Megan Kelly uh, interviewed him. You can go on YouTube and find that. And he says, God welcomes everyone to heaven, whether you're homosexual, lesbian, drug addict, whatever. God is love, and he couldn't, he couldn't fathom how God would send anyone to hell, and that's one of his mistakes he made. God doesn't send anybody to hell. God made a way in the pathway to not go to hell, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. But to give you an example there, here's a man that was once faithful. Uh, I even believe that uh, Brother Diamond told me that he used to play golf with him. 
And uh, David, Brother David told him, he said, Brother Colin, if you don't repent, you're going to go to hell. The very place that you say they don't exist. But what happened to him? There's a spirit of truth, the Bible says, and there's a spirit of error. Think about that. Now, there's a spirit of error, and there's a spirit of truth. So what happens to a person who once was in the faith, and all of a sudden now, they're believing a lie? How it happens is Satan comes through a lying spirit, through a deceiving spirit, excuse me, through a spirit of error, and questions what God said. Just like the garden. Did God say that? Now the Holy Spirit knows the beginning, the middle, and the end. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. Everywhere present. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons. That means that if they're paying attention to something, then something must be spoken. Hello? There must be an instrument in which the voice of the enemy can be heard. There has to be an avenue. So that means that there has to be someone who is standing in front of people and so-called ministering the Word of God, but they're actually ministering because they paid attention to deceitful spirits. They're actually teaching teachings of demons. Now, it's up to you and I who don't want to be a part of that sum to fine-tune, if you will, the gifts that God has given us through the laying on of hands. One of those gifts is the gift of discernment. So many Christians today do not have discernment. And that is the most important gift, if I can put it that terminology, that you and I need in the last days to be able to discern between what is of God and what is not of God. Now, I want you to understand some things that I'm going to be showing you tonight. I know that many of you have that spirit of discernment. And I know that many of you would not fall for some of the blatant tricks that are out there that the enemy would throw in people's lives. And the reason why is because you have been taught a solid foundation from the Word of God in this church. And see, when you have that basis... Rooted and grounded. You're not easily swayed. But I want you to understand that there are literally thousands upon thousands of Christians. That are so swayed with this spirit of deception. And the teaching of demons. Where did the demons get the material from? Brother Diamond was on the, on the Facebook today. He does that 20-minute video he does every day. And he was saying that uh, it's 80% truth and 20% a lie. 
He says, and eventually the little leaven leavens the whole lump. So sometimes it's very difficult to really look at and understand some of the things that are going on unless you have your spiritual antennas up. You've got to be connected to the Lord. He said, some are paying attention, which means somehow these demon spirits, these deceitful spirits had gotten their attention. Think about that. They got their attention. How did they do that? Hi, my name is Lucifer, and I'm coming to give you a deception. Would you like some? No, he's not going to come that way. He's going to come through what appears to be truth, or it's going to appear to be what's right, or it's going to appear to be Christian. In Corinthians it says, Marvel not, for Satan himself can be transformed into an angel, or the Greek word is angelios, or angel, or messenger of light. And he says, don't be surprised either that his ministers can be transformed into ministers of righteousness. Hello? If you want to ever hear some of them, turn on your Christian television. I don't watch Christian television. And I end up yelling and screaming at the TV. It doesn't do any good. But somehow these spirits have grabbed a hold of these people's attention. To the point where these spirits are taking the word of God and twisting it, contorting it to mean something that it was never intended to mean. Think about it. In 2 Timothy, Chapter 3, verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. What happened to Kumbaya, my Lord? What happened? Let's all get together. No, you can't all get together. He said... Those that deny the power thereof, from such turn away. I want to show you a slide of what's happening. You see that? That's called an angel board. These angel boards are being sold to Christians. And they're told that this is how you get in contact with your angel. But we all have a guardian angel, you know, he says. And, and they say, and, and because you have a guardian angel now, uh, you can contact that angel through this board. This is nothing more Nothing less than a Ouija board. 
but disguised in a Christian format, if you will. It's got the angels. My Bible says there's no female angels. That's the first clue. The second clue, which is not what too many people can look at if you were just a Christian, nominal Christian, and you would look at it from the very standpoint of what I'm going to show you, is right there is the five-pointed star. You see it? Right inside that little half moon there. Is the, right there. Is the pentagram. Christians are buying this, so-called. I say Christians, quote, unquote. He said, they're going to depart from the faith. Let's go back. Let's go back to 1 Timothy again. That's apostasia. Many are going to fall away from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits. They look like Christians. They sound like Christians. They, it, it, you know, it's something that, that's good, that's going to help you. But it's demonic. And this is going on with one of the largest churches now they say, I've read an article where they rebutted it, but they said we don't we're not saying we don't agree with, you know, the premise of the occult. But these people that are running this thing, they're Christians, and they want to reach out to the New Agers. So what they do is they become like the New Agers to get them to listen to them. That's deception. And one of the one of the churches that are, that is associated with this um, Christ consciousness is the Bethel Church in California, Johnson, where Bethel Music. Okay. And it's sad because some of their music's good. Now I want to show you another slide. Tarot cards for Christians. Before the devil was more sly. This is uh, Archbishop Wynne Wagner. He was an old Roman Catholic priest. But they're writing these things, and I'm bringing them to your attention so you can see that the mixture has already begun. Tarot for Christians. Now, you and I, if we saw tarot cards, we wouldn't have anything to do with that. But watch this next slide. These are Christian tarot cards. They say they're not tarot cards, but they, they are, because they're doing just about the same thing. These are crucifixion, resurrection, palm, psalm cards. Psalm readings are similar to tarot, and the cards are counted out according to your birthday, the day and year, and only three cards are used, and these will represent your past, present, and your future. It's called Christ Alignment. This organization is out of Australia, and it's infiltrating churches like you wouldn't believe. And it isn't any wonder, isn't it any wonder, they're in Australia. And what's one of the biggest Christian churches in Australia? Hillsong. Then we wonder why we got a hill song in New York with a naked cowboy at a woman's conference. Then we have a Broadway show for Christmas with a, a looks like a transvestite singing Silent Night. You ever saw it? Have you seen that? It's disgusting. Then another, you got circus acts coming into the church. 
with elephants and tigers on the platform of these big churches. You've got a pastor bringing a bed, and he's inside the bed, and he's giving a lesson. Another one with a Rolls Royce driving on, on the platform in the church. Charles Spurgeon, back in the 1800s, I believe it was, he said this in a sermon. He said, there's a time coming where instead of the shepherds feeding the, the sheep, you'll have clowns entertaining the goats. Way back then, he said that. There's coming a time when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, you're going to have clowns entertaining the goats. And this is how, this is how these people are reaching out to these New Agers. Go to the next slide. Christ Alignment Bethel Church in Redding, California, using tarot cards and new dancing as an outreach. They're not doing it personally, but they're allowing the Christ Alliance, and they're backing them, saying, we understand their heart, they're trying to reach people, and so therefore, you know what? My Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather to what? Reprove them. Look, we are to tear down fortresses and we are to build up edifices. We prophesy living stones upon people is one of the models of Christ alignment, which is located in Australia. Don't just seek the spirit for an answer. Seek him for a promise. These new age hippies conduct spiritual festivals and adult pornography shops like Sex Pro, partaking in homosexual transgender events and tarot card reading. Here's a naked tarot card reading photo taken by Popa and Penn. They're the ones that are exposing this stuff. Look at that. Here's a transgender. And here's the tarot card. Team member and tarot card reading at Christ Alignment. These are, these, but these are not tarot cards. These are all Christian images. They replace the tarot card images with Christian images. And they give you your, your, they give you your instead of, say, giving, telling you your future, like, a, like a, a, a person would, you know, you go to and they tell you your future. They're telling you your destiny. Why is that against Scripture? Why, why reading your future and your destiny? Why is it against Scripture? Because Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. You don't know what your life is going to consist of tomorrow. You may not wake up tonight. And the ministry is in, the, they go to all these new age places and they think they're going to win them to Christ. Go to the next slide, please. Okay. Come and find the awesome Christ alignment team and get your life changed in all this November mind, body, spirit. Door entry is free. Our accurate destiny readings address all life issues. You can choose the, mo the model T that suits your needs. Cleansing, dream interpretation, third heaven encounters, all using our own cards. Trained healers and seers are waiting for you. Folks, this is what's going... You see, we get, a, we get in a little bubble as Christians. But this is some of the stuff that's going on. And some of these churches are backing this stuff. Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Center, November 16th to the 18th. NOV, mind, body, and spirit. Just the opposite of what the Bible says, spirit, soul, and body. That's exactly what Satan does, twists it. So the most important is the body, the mind, the body, and then the spirit. No, God says it's the spirit first, the soul and the body. Go to the next slide. A really brilliant day at Morgan, um, Melbourne's biggest LGBTQ festival, Midsummer. We had 
accuse all day of hungry people wanting to know if there is any hope for their problems, for their lives. The team were brilliant, and most clients were having knockout encounters with the spirit of truth. <laughs> it is always a shock and so stunning to see just how much the spirit loves people who are out there, alternative, different. On Sunday, this resulted in several stunning instances of physical healings and many successful cleansings from entities. No mention of the blood of Jesus, no mention of salvation, no mention of Jesus Christ doing it. No, they're doing it. No expelling of demons, but they were... Successful in physical healings. Many successful cleansings from entities. Really? What does the Bible say? That many will be deceived. You read it in Revelation. When the beast and the false prophet comes because of the signs and wonders that he has done in their midst. These things are getting people ready to receive the false miracles and signs and wonders that are coming. And believe me, they're coming. Come on. Always remember, Satan has always been in the copycat ministry. The Father, ha the God has a Trinity: Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So does the devil. The Son became incarnate in the human flesh. The devil's going to become incarnate in the Antichrist. Jesus had a prophet that spoke before him and made a way, made his pathway straight. Come on, somebody. False prophet is going to have Elijah cast the fire down from heaven to bring validity to who he is. We are living in, our, I can't get that through enough. We are living in the last days. These are the things that they said was going to happen. Look what he says here. Our first client for the morning was a male transvestite prostitute who just wanted to die and wanted to know how soon he could die. He came to us last year, too. Well, what happened? Why didn't you fix him last year? Now he's coming back again this year, and he's saying, hey, when am I going to die? You didn't want to live anymore. If you came last year, you should have got free. You should have got, come on, somebody. No, no, he just wanted to die. He wanted to know how soon he could die. He came to us last year, too. He felt feeling lighter and free when he left. Lighter and free. Huh? Yeah, he'll be back next year. Feeling lighter and free. How about, no, no, no. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. There's no freedom there. But if you're not discerning, and you read that, you go, oh my gosh, yeah, they're reaching out to these people. Oh, they're, they're, they're out there reaching these lost people. Let me ask you a question. If God's so interested in reaching these people, why did he tell Lot to get out? Come on. Why didn't Lot stay there? And just kind of work with them, you know, get them, say, you know, just talk to them and, and heal them and deliver, you know, make them feel lighter. No. God said to Lot, the angels can't bring my judgment to you get out. And I'm going to tell you something. God's judgment won't fall on this earth. His wrath will not be poured out until the church is taken out.
Let me continue. It was, a br- it was brilliant to catch up with two well-known celebrity transvestites who knew us from last year's Queer Expo. Immediately they wanted to hug us, take photos, and just talk. We really felt the spirit on that meeting. What spirit? Two celebrity transvestites. Hmm, I wonder who they were. I wonder how many of those we let in our living room on television. Come on. All they wanted to do was hug us. Seriously? Take photos and just talk. I don't want to just talk. Talk about what? What are you going to talk about? (laughs) Look at this. We really felt the spirit on that meeting. My, my, my. One boy was afraid of a psychic had made a spirit enter him, but after chatting, chatting, that's a, that's a, a word, chatting. Mum, mum, mumming and chatting is evil. Chatting, he confided that he was just so lonely. I figured it out. I thought I, thought I had a demon, but no, I, I'm just lonely. We were able to break all that right off him, and he went away so happy. Isn't that wonderful? Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is the same Bethel church that lied and used deception in having people believe that gold dust was falling on their people. And their, their explanation of it was, well, the angels in heaven are walking on streets of gold, and they must have been joyful and dancing, and so all the dust from heaven was falling down on us. Till somebody in the audience took that gold dust and had it analyzed and it's synthetic, which means man-made. So that means if it was man-made, God doesn't use man-made stuff like that. God uses original. If it was gold, you know what those people would be doing, scooping up that gold. If that gold was from the streets of gold, which is pure gold, they would have scooped that up and gone and sold it at $1,000 an ounce. They found that where the gold came from was the ducking. When the ducking came on, when the, when the air conditioning came on, and all the blowers came on, it blew all of that gold. But how many people actually believe, thousands of Christians believe that that came from God? Or the feathers that came down, literal feathers, came down on the people of God. And they said, that's from God. And he used that scripture that says he covers us with his feathers. See, God has feathers. How does, it, how, does it, how does someone believe that lie? By twisting what this means. All that was saying about God and, you know, covers us with his feathers means we're protected. Like a hen would protect her chicks with her feathers and brood them and bring them in. He went off happy. No no words of thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus, for setting me free. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing a deep work in me, delivering me. Nothing. No mention of Jesus, the blood, forgiveness of sin. Nothing. I think I have one or two more. Look.
Now, we should pray for them. Yes. But I'm not going to be like them to win them. You have to be different from them to win them. Because we're not of the world. Come on, somebody. We're not of the world. God's word says we're not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. For if the love of the world is in you, the love of the Father isn't in you. And the reason why that they go to these extremes like this, and churches go to the extreme like this, because they want to grow their base. And they're only interested in growing their base, not whether the person is really truly saved or a real Christian. Next one, please. Do I have one more? Is that the last one? Okay. The Spirit clearly says that in a lot of times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. These leaders who started out right, many Christian leaders started out right. And what has happened? They're giving heed to seducing, Spirits and doctrines, teachings of devils. Now, I just showed you a few of them. But there's a lot more. There's a lot more foolishness going on. There's a lot more dumb stuff going on. I didn't put a slide up on this, but I, I know there is one because I went and I, I did some research on it. Let me read the bottom one from the Holman. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared. Uh, just put that up on the uh, regular scripture. You know, the uh, HC, uh, the HC, BS, HCSB. Put verse 2. Through the hypocrisy of liars whose conscience are seared. Now, let me tell you something about searing. For a conscience to be seared, is not something that happens instantaneously. It's something that happens over a progression of time. The Holy Spirit, I don't believe the Holy Spirit just sees somebody's conscience because they disobeyed once. But the Holy Spirit is coming time after time after time, telling them that's wrong, don't believe that, that's wrong. But they surround themselves with people of like mind. Just like a lot of these fire tunnels now, the young people are being drawn into these fire tunnels. They have these tunnels where the youth, they have people on the left side and on the right side, and they come down the aisle and they get, they have what's called slosh fests. You ever see them? It's called slosh fest. You go and you get drunk in the spirit. And they walk through the line and they get, of course, there's some spirit there. Because they really feel like they're drunk. They're falling all over each other, laughing uncontrollably, falling on the ground, falling over one another. People are laying hands on them and praying for an impartation of the spirit. I don't want that spirit. Why, do I, why are they going drunk? Well, they say, well, because Anaxis says, you know, that they said these men are drunk with wine. No, they weren't drunk with wine. Hello? Even Peter refutes that in the book of Acts. These are not drunk as you so suppose. They try to use scripture again to validify what the move they're doing. And what's happening is their conscience is getting seared and more seared and more seared to what happens. They open themselves up to demon influence. Their consciences are seared. But it happens over time. Time. There's another ministry, a young man called John Crowdy, Crowder. I don't know if you've ever heard of John Crowder. Young guy in his maybe late 30s, 40s, 
Tremendous amount of youth. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of youth follow his ministry. Him and his friend says, if you want to get high, you reach in your pocket and you pull out a little, little Jehovah Wana. And he says, you go like this. And you get off on Je Jehovah Wana. And people are doing that and they're getting so-called high and they fall all over the place and they're like, wow. Getting drunk in the spirit, falling all over the place. Ministers, women, women ministers, falling on the altar, falling on the pulpit, falling on the ground, can't stand up because they're drunk in the spirit. Whoa, whoa. Saying all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, they were hammered in the spirit. Last time I checked, doesn't the Bible say, be sober? Be vigilant? Why? Because your adversary, the devil, is roaming throughout the whole earth, seeking whom he may devour. Oh, the other thing they're doing is called grave soaking. You ever hear that? What they're doing is they call grave soaking. They find a, a minister that had the anointing like Catherine Kuhlman or Oral Roberts or one of the, uh, you know, like uh, the, the charismatic ones that have passed on, A.A. A. Allen and all these guys. And what they do is they go to their grave and they lay on their grave to soak up their anointing. And you and I are laughing and shaking our heads. But understand this. This is real. People are deceived to do such things. First and foremost, my anointing doesn't come from a man. It comes from God. Well, and what about Elisha and Elijah? You know, when, when Elijah died, they threw that dead man into his grave and he came back to life. That wasn't the anointing. God had a purpose for that person being back to life again. It wasn't to glorify Elijah. No man will glory in his presence. But again, look at what's happening. Of course, I, te I text Bash uh, Bishop uh, DeAnthony Towns in California, and I give him all these crazy stuff, and he just says to me, La you know, brother, you're crazy. Or they have busloads of, of women. I'm sure some guys, some men in there too. And they go traveling through California, and they find a, a real, like, desert spot. And they go and they wake up the angels. I'm not lying to you. They get out of the bus and they walk around going, wakey, 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 wakey. Wakey, wakey, angels, wakey, wakey. It's a waste of time when we consider it, but what's happening is there's manifestations taking place. There's presences taking place where they think this is God. Now, see, you and I are shaking our heads going, that's crazy, that's crazy. That's because you're discernment. But just think, you could be out there too. Come on, somebody. Appreciate what you get from this pulpit. Not just through me, through others that come and minister here, Brother Diamond and so forth, and other ministers that we have here. It's not just me. Pastor Tom, when he speaks, or, you know, uh, Rebecca or Annie or whoever. Because I make sure that it's right. We had that brother come and from Nigeria, and he preached, and he said that the body of Christ is the fourth member of the Godhead. Do you remember that? When your pastor and, and Linda, we were sitting right here, not in this one, but in the other building. We were sitting in the front row, and I looked at her, and I said, did he just say what I thought he said? That's when we had the cassette tapes. So I got a copy of the cassette tape, and I went home, I listened to it four or five times. And after listening to that, 
I called him on the phone. And I said, I said, brother, I have a question for you. I said, where did you ever come up with that teaching? He said, what's that? I said, the, you said that the body of Christ is the fourth member of the Godhead. And he hemmed and hawed a little bit. and He said, well, Dad Hagen taught that. I said, Dad Hagen's wrong. I said, that's, that's heresy. Well, he taught that in, in the Psalms where it says, and even Jesus quoted, he said, have I not said that ye are gods? I'm telling you, you know, I just thank God because he's prepared me in ministry. I studied this a long, long time ago when that happened. And I said to him, I said, well, let me ask you a question. Since you're building a doctrine on the Psalm 88, I think it is, which, you know, where the psalmist says, have I not said you are gods? I said, what does the word gods in Hebrew mean? In silence there for a moment, he says, I don't know. I said, see, there's the problem. You built a doctrine around what a man says, and you didn't examine it yourself. As if you look up the word in the Hebrew, it means judges. It doesn't have anything to do with deity. I said, number one, I said, that's false. You need to repent, brother. And number two, next Sunday I'm going before the church and I'm going to explain it to them and tell them that you, you were teaching false heresy. Not to, not to receive that. And for those of you that were here, I did it, didn't I? See, we need that. To stand firm on the truth, no matter what. I don't care if a church starts here in New Bedford, and they have miracles, and eyes are popping open, and ears are popping open, and legs are growing, or whatever the case may be. I want to know what they believe. Well, we believe that the Spirit is the Spirit. Oh, yeah? No, He's not the Spirit. It's not the Christ. It's Jesus Christ. It's not Father in heaven. It's our Father which art in heaven. It's not Father. Look at some of your new translations. Read the Lord's Prayer in some of the new translations. You know what it says? Our Father, hallowed be thy name. So Buddha can be your father. Muhammad can be your father. But when you identify it and you say, Our Father, which art in heaven, there's a distinction made. And some of your new translations, you read it. Read the NIV. Read the American Standard Bible. Some, some of those uh, versions that are out there. As you say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Because the devil is tricky and wants to take away from the word of God and get you to believe a lie so that that conscience can get seared so that he can lead you down the pathway to the spirit of error that will cause you to be turned away from Christ and to believe a lie. One more thing. I don't know if you heard about this yet. Came out in 2015, I believe. The Queen James Bible. The Queen James Bible for the transgender homosexual community. It's called the Queen James Bible. And it changes all of the references to homosexuality and lesbianism. When you have a chance, go on Google and just type in Queen James. Queen James Bible, you'll see it. Mockery, blasphemy. Yet society is training people through subliminal messaging. Teaching you, I see this a lot on bumper stickers, 
coexist. Everyone's right. Everyone's right. Everyone's right. If you think a banana is purple and I think it's yellow, we're both right. I'm telling you, that's how, that, was, that was years ago when Tylus had this training where they brought the psychologist in. Remember that? You went there? They said that about an apple. If somebody says an apple's red and one says it's black, they're both right. I said, no, they're not. I said, you're altering reality. Hello? I'm not believing that. Now, if you're colorblind, that's a whole different, that's a whole different thing. Okay? And yellow, right? But red is red, and black is black, and green is green, and blue is blue. But society is trying to change the way you think. That's why we have to have our minds renewed by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God. Right? He said, don't be conformed to this world. Don't let the ideologies and the philosophies of this world cause you to get a seared conscience. You know, they get all the, the stars up there on the stage singing, we are the world, we are his children. No, you're not. But they want everybody to come together, you know. You can't have that true unity unless you have the unity of the Spirit. But that's what's happening in the world. They're brainwashing people and lulling people to sleep. Those with convictions, they're telling you to throw away your convictions that God accepts everybody. No, He doesn't. If He accepts everybody, why is, why is Lazarus in the fire? Remember the rich man and Lazarus? No, the rich man was in the fire, right? Lazarus was in there, Abraham's bosom. Why was he in the fire? If God loves everybody, no one's going to go to hell. Everyone's going to be saved. Everyone's going to be, you know, go to heaven. Because they're trying to get you little by little, little by little, to move over to their philosophy. How they're getting us is from kindergarten all the way through college. How many good, solid Christian children that went to school, then they went to college and they come out atheists? Because they brainwash. And they say, we're brainwashed. Yeah, my brain's washed in the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit is saying through the hypocrisy of liars. The Bible says that they believe a lie. They believe the lie. How many know Satan's a liar from the beginning? He's the father of lies. How many times you did something or made a a judgment on something, and you really believed it was God, but it wasn't. And you went, how can I be, how can I be so dumb? How can I be deceived like that? Because you left the elementary principles of truth, of examining yourself and examining the situation according to the word of God, I heard a testimony on the radio the, the other day. This girl, she met this guy. He wasn't a Christian. She was a Christian. And oh, I, I told him I, if they want to start a relationship, and they started a relationship. Time out. God says don't be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. Oh, yeah, well, he got saved at the end. Yeah, he might be saved right now. 
But did you ask God? Did you seek God? Is that the one for you? Or is that the one that's filling the need? Come on, somebody. I mean, we want people, we want people to be happy and find someone, but make sure it's God. Is this helping anybody? Don't be deceived. Make sure your antennas are up and you have the mind of Christ. If you have the mind of Christ, like the Bible says, we have the mind of Christ, then examine those things to see if they're true. The Bible says, test the spirits. Test it. How do you test it? Test it by the word of God. Believe not every spirit, it says, but test the spirit. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you, God. Lord, I pray that this teaching tonight would help us to not go the way of the world, to have compassion on those who are lost, but not to conform ourselves to the world that we can win them. It's just the opposite. When we become more like Christ and they see Christ in us, they'll want what we have. But if there's no difference, what difference does it make? Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We ask you, Father, keep us steadfast. Like the Bible says, steadfast, unmovable, unshakable in the things of God. Help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit to hear your voice, to hear your leading and your guiding. You said the steps of a good man or a woman are ordered by the Lord. You said to trust in you and not to lean on our own understanding. And in all of our ways, you will direct our path if we'll have an ear to hear what you have to say. God, we thank you and we praise you all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Lord, we don't want nothing more, nothing less than your perfect will for our lives. And so God, we thank you and we trust you tonight. Now keep us as we go our separate ways and I pray, Father, that you will, by your Holy Spirit, give us protection, keep us from the fiery dots of the enemy as we yield up our shield of faith and we quench every fiery dot. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. God bless you tonight.